In this demonstration we're going to take a look at the Hue Correct node. Uh, this allows you to make color, correct, color adjustments to specific and selected parts of the image without affecting others or minimally affecting others. And The corrections that we make are based on the Hue and Saturations adjustment. Uh, I'm just going to put the Hue Correct node in so that we can see it in the properties panel and you can see that we've got a whole bunch of selection options here so we can affect the saturation, we can affect the luminance we can affect the red, the green or the blue colors without affecting any other colors we can also affect red, green and blue suppression uh, one of the primary uses of this tool is actually to deal with spill suppression from a key or from a rotoscope and we can also use the saturation threshold to actually um, to actually eliminate more range of colors from our selection so let's say for example that we want to um, we've got this sort of quite blue sky let's say for example that we want to desaturate this so again if you look at as I move the cursor around the image you can see this um, you can see this yellow bar this crosshair sort of dancing around again what that's doing is that's that's pinpointing the precise level of you um, underneath the cursor at any given time so you'll notice that if I make a selection, I'm just using Control and Shift to do this, if I make a selection of that particular area of sky, you'll see now that if I move around, there is no movement. You can actually see that it's now locked on to that hue that's within the range inside the red box. So to desaturate this, I would select my saturation tool, and you can see I've got this bar here. Um, you can see that this is the precise area where I, uh, where I want to make the selection. So I'm just going to bring this across so that it's directly over that point. And now I can just drag it down. And you'll see that as I do, the sky becomes desaturated. There we go. So if I just hit D to select and deselect that, you can see how much, how much the, the sky is being desaturated by this. You can also see that I can actually pull the cheeks in here and what this does basically is it is, is I'm, I'm telling Nuke to include fewer blue tones in the range. If I was to widen that out I'd be extending it and I'd be basically saying take more colour values into the range. So by pulling that in I'm basically eliminating the possibility that it may take some blue values out of the, uh, out of the grasses uh, and incorporate those into my desaturation. Okay so let's um, Let's uh, apply similar technique to uh, another part of the image. So let's let's get in quite close on these um, on these bushes. Let's say that I want to incre increase the uh, intensity of the uh, of the colours within these bushes. So again, I'm going to take my I'm going to use Control and Shift to make a selection, and I'm going to select select a range of greens within that area. And again, you can see the yellow the yellow crosshair actually locks into place. So we can zoom out now so we can actually see more of our image. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take our green values, again bring the bar over so that it's that it's right over my range, and then I'm going to pull it upwards. And you can see that that intensifies the range of greens in my selection. But we've also got a we've also introduced a problem. Again, if I hit the if I just toggle the D on and off. You can also see that that selection is also affecting the sky, it's also affecting the rocks. So again, I can bring my threshold in a little bit on both sides. To eliminate more from the selection. So now if we hit D, we can see that the effect on the sky is still quite pronounced, the effect on the rocks is much less. So let's look at how we could actually deal with that. If we start by thinking about the sky, essentially the reason why we're getting green tonality in the sky is because they're in the same hue range. It's just that the sky is a sort of a much more desaturated version of the greens that we're seeing in the ground. So to address this we can actually use the saturation threshold. So if we select if we select the saturation threshold we kind of get our nearest point move it across so it's right over the point and then start to drag it upwards. And just look at the sky as we do this. And 
essentially we're, we're taking this up until absolutely none of our sky is affected. We can also bring the points up on the adjacent areas just to include more of that threshold into our selection. So again if we toggle the effect on and off now we can see that we've got that intensity of green in our bushes but you can now see that, that that's not affecting the, the sky. It's still having a little bit of an effect on the rocks but we could deal with that separately. So how's this working? Essentially what's happening is that um, is that as we as we raise this saturation threshold the saturation will only occur to areas of the image that are actually above this area of saturation so essentially what this means is that the green areas are actually above this area of saturation but the sky areas and, and most of the rock areas are actually below this area of, of uh, saturation so as we raise this up we eliminate more and more of the sky until there's absolutely non no parts of the sky whatsoever affected by the uh, by the intensification of colors that we've applied into the green so that's essentially how the saturation threshold works and that in principle is how we uh, use this uh, to to match and change the very specific elements of an image based on hue and saturation